hello, hello. Weavers and believers, and friends and foes, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Leaving Hillsong. My name's Tanya, and and I'm super excited that you've chosen to spend some time with me and Catherine here today on Leaving Hillsong. Now, it's been years since Catherine and I have been chatting back and forth between London and Sydney, and she's only recently decided, yet. Yeah, now's the time. Now's the time that she wants to talk about what happened in Hillsong and what that was like for her in the UK over, over quite a number of years. We've exchanged a lot of information over the years and like really kind of, you know, compared notes and helped each other out. So it's a very different interview. She's not Australian at all. Uh, she's a very precise person as you'll hear. So, you know, it's really interesting to hear her point of view. Before we get to that, I did promise you a royal update on the case between Hillsong and the Queen, as we call her, of leaving Hillsong. So the update on the case, as you're aware, Natalie Moses filed a case in the Fair Work Australia Law Courts, which is the first step that you make in this country when you want to have negotiations uh, regarding employment practices and dismissal. That has now led to a mediation process which isn't really going too far last they left off. So it's now been decided that this case will proceed to trial in the Federal Court of Australia. That is that Ms Moses, our Queen, will take this case through the Federal uh, Court regarding adverse action that she believes was taken against her. And while that will be an open court like it was, and we've got like, and while that opens up all kinds of avenues for excitement over potential cross-examination and subpoenas, as we heard about recently, that would be unlikely to be heard until 2024 which won't come as a huge surprise to any of you who have followed the Brian Houston trial, mainly because of the backlog um, that has, is still left over from the pandemic in Australia. Mediation could still be achieved satisfactorily before then, but otherwise we really could get the season two that, you know, we've all been hoping for. And I say that with the greatest of respect to our Queen, who is doing everyone a fantastic form of justice by lodging these complaints and going forward with the matters as far as she has. Thank you very much to the Moses family. None of this comes easy or uh, cost-free. Uh, you can be sure of that. So on today's episode called Everyone Makes Mistakes, I've just got Catherine to go through her history and through the, the questions we ask anyone, everyone on this show, just kind of how'd you get there, what'd you see and what made you walk out the door and I really like this episode. It was a really great conversation. We've been, like I said, talking for ages so we just had a bit of a chat. It's long overdue and I really hope you enjoy Everyone Makes Mistakes with Catherine from London. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. I'm so excited you're here. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. How long? We did try to figure it out once, I think. How long have we known each other? Five, six, seven years? A long time. Yeah, it's been quite a long time now. And I was still on, in Hillsong when I first contacted you. Okay, um, that's right. Yeah, because I read your book and then I found you on Facebook. And... As well, I mean, we were just talking before I pressed record. Um, it's it's taken you quite a, a while to come, like, arrive at the conclusion that you want to talk. And today you were like, when are we doing the pod? And I was like, let's do the pod. <laughs> so we'll kick off with how did you find yourself in Hillsong? Tell us, like, as, as much as you want. Like, uh, look, so give us a bit of background. Like, here you are 
you live in London, which I think is just like a big snowy place. I don't know all the different names and stuff, so you'll have to guide me through. How did you wind up in a church like Hillsong? Well, I was brought up by parents that never, ever really went to church. And my only okay. experience of church at school was, you know, the church services that you get taken to at, like, Christmas. And mm. I think we went at spring harvest, like, and times like that, like Easter. But I, I didn't really understand anything about God or church. I, I didn't believe there was a God and for a long time. And it was only when I went to university that I started to mix with people who did believe in God. And I started to think that, okay. you know, that it was interesting. But I... You met the Christians at university? Yes, and I found it interesting, but I still didn't really go to church. And then, so after about five years of working after university, I... I started to really question what life was about and wanted to really find an answer. So I ended up going to a Baptist church where I was living and heard the gospel and the story of Jesus and became a Christian. And I spent oh. about four years in churches in that particular place, like learning about the Bible and learning, you know, what the message is. Mm. And it was a really good experience for me. I made a lot of friends. Uh, it gave me a new outlook of li on life. And I really felt like I had a really good future ahead of me that maybe I could one day go into ministry. It's always been my oh, yeah. passion to go into ministry. I, I ended up moving away and I ended up in London and okay. at, at Hillsong. No, no, and, no, no, no. One doesn't just end up at Hillsong. How did, how did one find oneself there how'd you well I actually saw Hillsong on TV I was looking for a new church and I saw Hillsong on TV it was on a Christian um TV program they they were they were giving a the spotlight to Hillsong mm. like the whole episode of this program and I thought oh wow that looks really interesting that looks really exciting so it's quite a different a, a environment from the sort of small country town Baptist church is that am I in the right place I mean I don't know how small your church was before yeah but... it was very different when I saw it on tv to me it looked because it had all the editing and everything you know making it all look really good like they always hmm. love to do in Hillsong it it just looked so exciting to me like there was a, a group of people in London that were really going for God and and it, and it was an exciting service. I could see that from yeah, yeah. the TV show. Uh, so, um, whack us on the map here. What kind of time are we talking? Mid two thousand, somewhere like that. Yeah, mid two thousands. Okay, so you go along so, what by by yourself? Do you turn up? I went with friends because I like the other people I spoke to wanted to come and check it out as well. So I went with friends. Okay. We all got very excited about it. It was just young and fresh and new and the people were really friendly. And it just it just seemed different. It seemed like some something we hadn't seen before in the UK. All right, uh, because I, I mean I'm thinking by by the time you got there, they would have been there for a while, wouldn't they, in London? Been there for I 10 think years. They'd been there maybe about five years. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. Exciting. And what you loved it from the start? Yeah, I loved it, and I loved the music because up to that point, I hadn't really heard heard Hillsong's music. So, I loved the songs that were coming out of Hillsong, and I I loved the way they were doing it. it they, I remember going to something where they they told you 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 can have it all as a Christian. You don't have to feel like you have you can only do some things in life. You you can have everything you dream of, and I remember that really inspired me oh yeah and at the time i mean had you still been dreaming about ministry and yes so when they said you can have it all i thought that meant that you know i could get married because i wasn't married at the time and that i could have be in ministry so they sold me a message that you know was what i wanted to hear at the time Wow, so I got involved. Okay. And then 
yeah, tell us about um, what your average kind of life in Hillsong was like from there. Well, I ended up moving into London because at the time I was living outside of London and I actually moved into London into a shared house with other Hillsong people okay. and started serving on their teams. But the problem I had was living in London is very expensive. So you have to work full time and you don't always find work that's right next to where you live. So I had to work hard in a job. I had to commute across London to it. And I, I was obviously exhausted when I got home, you know, because I work hard in my job. And mm. they expected you to spend so many hours in church serving for them that it became unsustainable for me. And I, I had to stop doing it because it just I just couldn't keep up with what they expected from you. And there was a few times where pastors would ask me why why I wasn't doing what I said I was going to do for them and it my answer was always that it wasn't my highest priority which oh. <laughs> they they had sold you that God was only going to move in your life if you served on team so I became someone that was a bit of a letdown to them oh and that I mean how early on in the piece is this pretty early on really because I've always worked really hard in my job so what do you do I've worked in IT for a long time so it's mentally draining working in IT because yeah, you know yeah. you're problem solving all the time so it's not so much physical exhaustion but mental exhaustion from doing that sort of job I remember chatting with you and you were on the way to work and, I mean, this is years ago, but you it was like snowing and you had to commute for an hour and, mm. I think as well, you guys really do work extra, extra from what I can tell. So Well, I was also brought up by my parents that my job was the pri my main priority. I needed to be able to support myself. So mm -hmm. it was never going to be an option that I would not work to volunteer in Hillsong. But I got into this trap where I wanted to progress in Hillsong because they said, you you know, they would stand on the platform and say, you can be like us. But there would always be this condition that the only way to be like us is if you serve on team. That's your takeaway now. What, what was it phrased like at the time? Because they're never that explicit, hey? I remember once going to a pastor and saying, I really want to become a pastor. Like I feel like I've got a gift that I could I could be a pastor, a gift of teaching. And they would say, like they said, they always said, like, but this one particular time, he definitely said, carry on serving on team. Mm. So there was no other way of assessing whether you had the skills to be a good pastor other than if you spent hours and hours serving for them that's interesting though isn't it because it is about who's willing to s sacrifice the most hey yeah and it's i always felt overlooked because i know that like i'm still a christian now i can say like hillsong and my church experience has not stopped me being a christian i still know that god is going to use me it's not not going to be in hillsong but I know that is still coming, but it's going to be in a completely different way. Or and that possibly you've been being a great person the whole time through and you were used, but not just with um, banners and whistles and things. Like it's so, I think that's so sad. Hey, like you, the little things that you've probably done along the way, because they can't make a video out of it, you feel like you haven't done enough okay so but you carried on yeah so um and you would have been under the uh pastoring of gary clark at the time yeah that's right yeah okay i mean i never really spoke to gary very much the only time i ever got to speak to him was if he was walking through the foyer you could kind of grab him and say oh i loved your preach but apart from that i never really got to know him because i wasn't spending the time on team to get to know okay. him okay okay yeah, And I mean, that's such a common thing that people, particularly like young people in your situation, get pressed to make those choices. But you can only really do that if you're rich, like if you're a rich kid, because 
if you've got to work hours and hours in a job that drains you, you haven't got that energy. Or the option is that you do do it as well, but you end up burnt out, which I wasn't prepared to do because I was brought up to believe that my job came first. So I wasn't going to burn myself out so I couldn't work. So that's interesting, yeah. isn't it? I, I mean, I wonder what is in it for different people. Obviously, like the past, as kids weren't brought up that way. So they don't get those kinds of choices so you're still attending and you're still going um what what was your schedule like then you were still on weekends yeah yeah so I still went but I think once they realize that you're not prepared to serve you're kind of a bit of a non-entity which okay. obviously is not God's heart so I drifted more and more away from it I never stopped loving the music I guess I got demoralized and then there was a time in the last part of me being there. Which was that, how long? How long were you there for? Oh, a long time. But obviously, I came and went a bit. Um, but it was a long time. It would have been, well, from about 2004, five to only went really when the whole thing with Brian um kicked off so that would have been two or three years ago is it that okay well with Carl or Brian which with Brian so... resigning that was really when I feel like I left okay fact, I told people I was leaving but I'm not saying I was there consistently yeah, I yeah. came and went over that time so it's a long time that I was there what? um all right, so I'm just interested. Is that what made you leave? Yes. All right. It was a shock, and I know one of Elaborate. my Elaborate. Now, tell, tell me what's that. Tell yeah. me what that's like. So you've been you've been going along, and you've been kind of thinking, "Oh, I'll still kind of hang in here a bit." Yeah. I mean, I'm putting words in your mouth. You tell me, and then, um, and then these all this stuff came out last March, or. You tell me, was it the January or the March or the... Yeah, it was talking. hearing that Brian had been drinking on sleeping pills and things had occurred. That that kind of, that was a massive shock and it was a massive shock to one of my closest friends who's been in Hillsong since a teenager. We just, okay. we couldn't really process it because, like, I, I think for a long time I felt that there probably were things that were being hidden just I got that sense but when you actually hear so like them admit that Brian has done something and we still don't really know properly what happened because they haven't really told us have they but when you hear well, that something's I mean, gone on that has caused him to have to resign that's that's massive news uh you tell me your perception of it and but you know anyone out there that's listening that just got stuck in the car with somebody who's listening to some strange podcast what what was the news as you understood it that because of a couple of moral failures brian had had to resign one was because someone who worked for him he'd sent an he sent a text message that he shouldn't have sent to her and the other one was that he was on sleeping no, was he on sleeping tablets? I can't remember what type of tablets. He was on some sort of tablets and he'd been drinking and he'd ended up in a woman's hotel room. And that's as far as we know about what yeah. exactly happened. What the, We don't know the detail of either situation of what, we don't know what was said in the text message. We don't know what happened in the hotel room or why he was in the hotel room. But the fact that he had to resign from that indicates that it was not good because why would you resign otherwise? Right, like yeah. it, like the yeah. the attitude of oh he didn't do anything but he's had to resign doesn't kind of sit with me because I'm like yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. well you must have done something otherwise why have you resigned so so this was a massive shock to me and one of my closest friends who's like I said was there since a teenager so for her ma a huge part of her, her identity is in Hillsong and she still can't she still can't really process it now like she still wants to think that there wasn't a reason for Brian to resign 
what is that thinking of hers now? Like, because obviously, if you're quite close, I'm just wondering, you're quite mm. close, you talk these things over, you've arrived at different conclusions. Like, what do you make of that? I think I just think it's tough for her because she started so young. She, she, she's always looked up to the Houstons. So, and, and the other thing is, is I'm not judging. Like, I know we're not perfect. I know that we're like sinners. The Bible says we're sinners. I'm not judging, but it's, it's just the whole way it was, it's all gone about. Like it was mm. the fact that it happened a long time before and they, and it, and it was only at that point that they decided they needed to tell people, but this had happened a long time before and he was supposed to be not preaching and like it, it's not it's not so much that I'm judging him for not being perfect because none of us are perfect it's that plus the court case where it's turned out that you know things are, are being said about the court case that no one knew about like no one knew the circumstances before that is coming out now mm. so I'm not I'm not judging the Houstons I'm sure they did passionately believe in their church but I feel personally I feel that at the moment Hillsong is not doing very well because it wasn't built enough on moral standards and I know it's hard for them to I, I mean like I do love them and my friend absolutely adores them like I do love them as people I do think they made a difference to my life and I struggle with the fact that they think that they think everything's fine and they don't yeah. really want to say that they could have slightly done anything wrong. And I thought the whole point of being a Christian is that we humble ourselves and we say, look, I messed up. Mm -hmm. Like, help me. Like, have they risen so high that they can't admit fault? Because that's not what Christianity is to me. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? And I mean, you you being careful as a lot of people are not to you know come across as as judging, and yet I'm still convinced that there's a very big difference between you and somebody st standing on a stage and saying, "Look, here I hear from God. You better listen to what I say." Um, you know, I'm sure they've got to mm -hmm. have higher standards, you know, from to whom much is given and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, well the bible does say to whom much is given like more is expected so yeah it's I, but then again like i sympathize with the fact that brian was born into it mm. uh, so he took that path and it was something he was born into so oh it's you know, complex um yeah yeah when it, when you say they've made a difference in your life tell me about that please because i mean that's what we're here about is about all of the stuff, you know. So there's you see all the comments on social media all the time saying, mm. you know, thank you, thank you, Bobby, thank you, Brian. You've done, you know, you changed me, you helped me. Tell me more about that, you think. Like, I don't know, whatever you're comfortable with, obviously. But like, yeah, tell me, tell me the good stuff. I had a really good time there, and that's not really what being a Christian is about, but obviously having friends from there and hearing the music did bring me a lot of peace really and healing it's just for me it it couldn't ever be where I would find my real calling which is disappointing when they kind of sell you that when you join and then what makes you think that it can't be because it's coming out now that about possibly because it's only speculation I don't think anything's been proved that money money that has been collected from offerings has been spent in a way that was benefiting the pastors but wasn't benefiting the poor I I mean I don't think that's too kind of hard to trace I look back at some of their Instagram posts from three four years ago on jet skis in California and kind of go how like how is that ever okay yeah, when they when they're really demanding, like really pumping up the pressure on people to give and give some more, and then they're all at the beach, like it's yeah. So I was saying to this to you before. 
even if I had become a pastor, I think immediately my conscience would have kicked in if I'd have seen how being a pastor is in Hillsong. And isn't that interesting? Because we we used to joke around and say, like, you know, when do you get when, when do you get called into the back and gone like this? And you know, this is actually like a front or something, and we're all actually, you know, here's your bag of money or something. like how does that all happen? But it seems to be incremental. Hey, like you, as soon as you get there, you somebody's conscience might kick in and someone else's might not. Or did you see anybody yeah. rise up in that in the ranks in that kind of way and change? I mean, did you see any of that? I, I do remember having a conversation with a pastor when I was talking about how I'd spent money on some of their merchandise and he had this strange look in his eye like, he thought I was mad for buying the merchandise. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just read it like that. He wasn't like, oh, great, you bought the merchandise. It was almost like a look of guilt. Oh, wow. Well. That's that's how I perceived it. He he wasn't engaging with the fact that I was buying their merchandise. It was like, it was like he felt bad because he knew things I didn't know. And at the time, I didn't know that possibly that the money was being spent, you know, on things that, weren't benefiting the wider community. I never understood that for a long time. And it's probably not till I spoke to you and that I really started to realise that that everything we ever gave money for was always That's my fault now, is it? No, I realised that <laughs> if you gave if if you were contributing to a charity, you were always giving money. It wasn't coming from the offering. Yes. I think we had this conversation quite early on that the money that they were getting from the offering, like now, I would like to see proof of how much of the offering money is spent helping the needy and poor. Yep. Yep. Uh, I would like to see evidence of their benefit to the community. Because yeah. what all I can see, and I'm waiting for somebody to rush in and prove me wrong, I would love them to, is that they're very good at mobilising volunteers and donations and putting mm. their stamp on it. But where the money that is taken up goes, uh, and you're in a, a finance section of IT, aren't you? So this is kind of... Yeah, yeah. So it's. I think we connected quite early on about talking about the finances because, yeah, obviously, like, I work in finance IT, so I understand a lot about accounts. So oh I started want, looking at the london accounts just out of interest and try like even though i'm not i wouldn't say i'm, a, I'm an auditor like i'm nowhere near an auditor so i started looking at the accounts and i got this sense which could just be you know wrong like because i don't know for sure that some of it looked a bit odd to me <laughs> what do you mean odd come on now just i think i looked at christine kane's trafficking accounts the A21 um, business? Yeah, yeah, the A21. And I just thought some of the numbers looked a bit strange. I can't remember the detail. But I, I just saw big numbers in places that it looked... I, I thought, why why have they spent so much money? I looked at numbers of, say, how much they spent on leaflets and advertising. Okay. And it would be a lot of money. And I think it doesn't really make sense to me. Just my opinion. Mm -hmm. This isn't gossip. This isn't sort of, do you know what I mean? This is seriously, someone in finance IT takes a look at their accounts and finds. I just felt a bit like they didn't look add up to me, but that was just, just mm -hmm. my, my sense not being, I'm not legal. I'm not legally qualified to be auditing anyone's accounts. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's just that this is, you know, clearly been an issue for a long time because I'm not sure what you were told in London but they've always been very explicit our books are open come and have a look anytime you want make an appointment we've got nothing to hide so you've been mm. invited to do that kind of thing as such so we started looking didn't we at how many offshoot companies there are as well and it, none of that oh. made sense and I think with the What's recent court case, that's coming out about why that the, there's so many companies. Um, sorry, which court case? Um, the court case that's coming that's coming up soon with the the lady that took all 
like took copies of all the accounts and is suing okay uh, now suing he also yes who has filed a complaint with the fair work commission in australia about um situations in her workplace and has made complaints to that court about peculiarities in the financial departments that she happened upon it, it's just and i think that does involve moving money to different entities doesn't it yeah i mean one of the things that she has alleged in the court papers is that because i mean this is all done in the name of charity as you're saying so you know most of these companies that they have under the let me think what it's called acnc the australian charity national commission or acnc is the governing body in australia of charities and their regulations say that you're not allowed to go around sending money around the world for your charity so there's limits on that it has to be approved and some of what the queen of leaving hillsong natalie moses has found is that when that wasn't allowed uh hillsong just simply transferred money to the usa and sent the money out from there just those kinds of things of how money's been shifted internationally yeah. been quite illuminating uh and i think that didn't come as much of a surprise to us to hear that someone is taking them to court about that because i think we were confused by how it how all these different companies that they own worked is that fair well, to say yeah absolutely i mean but Judy, you know way more than me i mean i how do you think they work i don't i don't know i um sorry i mean even recently you go and put hillsong into the search engine of the acnc and there's 30 names of companies that come up and some of these charities exist to support another charity like it's it's yeah way beyond my um field of knowledge so i mean if there's anything that stands out to you especially because you've got different regulations there and um how I, I think the uk is a lot more transparent aren't they with charities well i was a bit confused by brian having paid a lump sum out of his own money to the person that he sent a text message to when she left because in the uk i don't think you could legally pay off someone without putting it in an, into the accounts mm -hmm. So that okay. confused me, how he could do it out of his own pocket and admit he did it out of his own pocket, but maybe the rules are different in Australia. Oh, no, that was to prove what a good guy he was because he didn't want to take But you would have to legally account for that here. What, he just took it out of the spare change bowl by the front door, I thought, like the few... Well, you couldn't that. do that here. You could get into serious trouble doing that here. How, because how it's so? the transaction that's come from a company it's not you know it should be but, accounted for but if he paid for it out of his own pocket then it's not right but he's doing that on behalf of a company okay yeah okay see that's i mean i so that confused I, me absolutely don't know the laws here but it, it was very much promoted you remember as oh you know he would never trouble the the goodness of hillsong with his impropriety so he's paid for it himself i mean there must have been a damn good reason that that happened uh but well that's i don't think you could do that in the uk without getting into serious trouble because you're making you're doing a transaction on behalf of a company right if you're paying off staff you you're paying off staff from that company So that's all that's always not sat right with me because you know how many other times have they paid people money that's not been accounted mm. <laughs> I don't know why I think your rules are more transparent I just seem to mm -hmm. it's possible they are yeah remember that your your charities yeah. require more mm -hmm. open books but effectively Hillsong is run as a company so if you want to ensure that no one can sue you, you need to do everything by the book and you need to not be paying money out of your own pocket like that. Yeah, that's interesting. Then it's transparent. Yeah, that's that's never been a big one. So you've had like 
you had questions and and queries and doubts and you know had to prioritize like putting food on the table and stuff like that uh but then it was very much because I'm, I'm quite interested in different things affect different people like where they go nah you know this one I just am not hanging around for so just take me to you know where you go now this is it I'm pulling up stumps because of the Brian thing what was I mean tell me what the feeling is like when you decide this is it sort of last March you've heard this stuff about Brian and you know out of out of over 15 what nearly 20 years I guess this really did it for you it's very painful to decide that you're not part of the church that you've been in that long but I think over time it's it felt strange to start with but over time it's become something that I've moved on from how did you actually go right this is it what what was that process how quick long what I mean long and then sudden or like how did that oh, it was when that announcement came that Brian had stepped down um I tried to have conversations with people in Hillsong London about it and I I got I got told not to discuss it okay which I to me this is like some this is a big thing that's just happened and people mm. didn't discuss it and when you say uh, got was, told is that by leadership or by people around you group leader yeah I was in a group and the leaders said we're not going to discuss that which this just huge thing has just happened wow. and they don't want to talk about it so I had to leave that group but you didn't leave. have to a lot of people stuck around not everybody left that group so like what happened for you that you went no 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 not this I mean had had you been through this before I'm wondering was this the first biggie for you or like do you know what I mean what happens to you that you go no I'm walking out I'm not doing this I just felt like I because I've met people from Australia online I felt like I'm extremely involved in Hillsong and these leaders do not have the same understanding as me and they're telling me not to talk about it like I felt like they wanted to just pretend it wasn't happening and we're all going to just carry on like it's not happening well for me it was like I needed to process it and these people weren't there for me to process it they weren't there to talk about it to try and make sense of it so that I could stay in Hillsong they wanted to sweep it under the carpet and I I'm not sure if they were told by senior leaders that they were to do it that way but to me that's not like if something quite traumatic is happening and you can't get support from church what's the point of the church well and something quite massive being the you know the absolute top person of the whole place has just left mm. but, you know but that's interesting that you say that in terms of those pastors hadn't been around as long as you had and they you know don't get the same meaning when you turn people over in leadership that fast it's going to happen hey they'd been to a special meeting though for leaders where they were probably oh. told to calm people okay. down not to listen to gossip but <laughs> th like this whole list not listening to gossip thing where does that cross over with people needing to process You can't Sorry. just say everything's gossip when people need to process what's happened and understand what's happened and come to some sort of way of staying in the church. You can't just say don't gossip when people need to process how they're feeling. It's it's violating. It's I mean it's a, it's a it's a it was an absolute state of emergency crisis. This person's just disappeared that's been around for nearly 40 years mm -hmm. promising safety and then they're gone I just felt like I I might not have ever made it into the leadership team but I felt like I was in the heart of Hillsong like sure. I I knew people in Australia you know that I would hear I would hear when things were happening in Australia before they would. So 
to be told, you know, be quiet, that wasn't going to work for me because it was denial. It was really hard. It was a shock. Um, but I think over time, so it's like, it probably is only a year really, isn't it? Um, I've just realised that I don't need it. But then that's the nature of God. Like God is not a building or a church or people. So God can God can come in other ways to make, you know, to give you the things that Hillsong was giving you. So, you know, I've just moved on. I do different things. I, I watch different churches online. I've made different Christian friends. And I have tried to go to the local church where I live. That's wonderful. Tell me what it's like with that friend you were saying you were close to that she'd been mm -hmm. in there since she was a teenager. How's it affected your friendship? She always says we have to agree to disagree if I... I'm really tactful with her because I know it's hard for her to process it. But if I do kind of say I don't think Brian was so out of it that he probably went in someone's hotel room. Mm -hmm. She she gets upset because she thinks he he just didn't know what he was doing. She just thinks he made a mistake. Oh, certainly. Um... So he's forgiven because he made a mistake. But to me, it's a whole bigger thing than that because, as I said before, I'm not judging, but it's the way it was covered up for. And then we were told so much later on after that he was kind of being cancelled or whatever they were trying to do and it's just it was just the way the way it all came out really just before the court yeah. case yeah it's all been thrown in together hey mm. so i don't and it's also the way that the Houstons in general have acted like it's nothing because I don't think any woman who's married to a man should think them sending in it because they have said an inappropriate test, haven't they? Yeah, that was stated. I don't think any woman married to a man should think that them sending an inappropriate text is nothing. And maybe there's some saving face there, but the way it's treated like it never really happened yeah yeah uh and look for a long time that confused me because you know if i'd been there i would have been like excuse me what about that hotel but mm. they're just sort of not addressing it and you have to wonder if that's because time passes people get busy you know emotions die down new people turn up uh, mm. you know, maybe it's just, and I mean, we don't know what the wife of Brian Houston thinks about all those text messages. We all saw her face on the meeting. She clearly hasn't mm. been impressed by the whole thing. Uh, tell me, you mean a little bit about like, she turned out to be a bit of a disappointment as a women's leader. Uh, did well, you go to colour and all that? Did you? Yeah, to... I did go to colour and... I think I liked it at the first one, but then after a while, I realised there wasn't a lot of substance to it. See, I'm I mean, to... I need yeah. stuff that's meaty and like is challenging me. And the the problem is, it's a, they have this formula and they repeat it like all the time, and there's nothing different. So it's great, it's great the first time, but then okay. over time, it's just all the same, isn't it? Because I know I watched it when it was online, like maybe about a year and a half ago. And I was just so bored. I, I mean, and that's okay. I, I'm literally asking because I see people going, thank you, Bobby, you changed my life. You've carried me through. And I'm literally trying to find out what, what you know, what that is. If I've missed something because it seemed formulaic to me and misogynistic but that's me oh you know in terms of the issues that women have to deal with in the current society i it, you know 
I never found it was really not that I was able to attend after the first trial, of course. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, do you know what I mean? I didn't know what keeps bringing back women from all over the world to attend this conference. So if I'd missed something, let me know. Well, I don't either, and I don't know if it's partly just my personality and my need to do stuff that's more maybe a bit more complicated um mm. i don't like hearing the same same preach over and over again in a different and, I, and this is again you know i never took to brian's preaching because it was pretty much the same thing every sunday night and my dad would say to me "Ma, he's an evangelist like hey, that's what he does he spreads the gospel it's not that but i you know like you yeah, think it must be me that missed the the boat or something because People turn up week after week. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right. So you've been um, you've been uh, meeting with God in a different room, but you noticed <laughs> as you, you've noticed that the things are different in the Baptist church than the last time you were there. I just ago. I just started going to a local Baptist church and have realised that over the course of this twenty years, the whole mega church influence has has filtered into the more local church and they're now mm. like very much about teams and like how you can help the church and to grow and like have you know having welcome people and it's all it's all a bit more commercialized than it used to be in a lot of these churches like it, they've well, learned they've learned off the mega church because the mega church is, is successful in numbers but it's kind of taken away from the originality of how these smaller churches used to be like when I first went to church and went to a Baptist church it was very much its own its own style that 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 worked for them and even that church I know has adopted some of these principles I mean there's like buzzwords isn't there around like welcome home you, you walk in another church now and you see welcome home okay like it's not you know people think oh we take that and we use it in our church and I just think it's a shame because there's no originality anymore in church. It's and and I'm not even sure these principles really work now. Like the the church should be about helping people, helping the community, teaching people, praying. It shouldn't be around like people on the welcome team have got a t-shirt saying welcome home. It's about making the world a better place. If you wear this t-shirt and turn mm. up the teams hey yeah i'm just so grateful to you thank you because i know this has taken you a long time to reach this place where you felt comfortable to do it and i'm so thrilled that you chose us to do it with and i'm thrilled that you're proud to preach a christian voice loudly i if the christians are running away from me they won't speak to me so I don't know why they're scared of me or something. So <laughs> thank you. And, you know, there's so many people listening now that that are still holding on to their faith and battling with these issues because of their experiences. And I'm, you know, so grateful to you for being that voice and sharing that. It it helps so much for people to know they're not alone with wanting to walk away and yet not wanting to let go, yeah? I just I just think it's a shame where people don't want to think too too widely about what's happened. They want to just carry on believing that everything's great. So I hope I just hope our chat might help some people to think a little bit more about what they've experienced like if they're kind of just soldiering on and hoping everything's going to be okay because I like I had I just have noticed that the current Hillsong is is a, a small section of what it used to be in Sydney mm. and the world because they've been closing campuses. So it can't be easy for people that are still in that church seeing it kind of going downhill, if that's the right word. I mean, what would you say to them then? You were there for a long time in those trenches. I feel like the, chariz the charisma of the church is gone. Like the one thing that, Brian had was he was quite charismatic 
Mm. It's not drawing the people in. So, I, I mean, I'm not saying that I don't want Hillsong to flourish again. But if it ever does, it needs to be with the right moral grounding that will keep it flourished because it's a really sad situation that it flourished so much and it's crumbled and it, it does break my heart, to be honest. So many foot soldiers as collateral damage, hey? Yeah, and it can't be easy for people still in it wanting it to all be okay while it obviously isn't. It's all right to question whether a church is completely of God or not, because I do believe you can have a church that is completely of God, but it takes leaders that are incredibly, credibly not focused on themselves and their own glory for it, which, yeah. I also think the Houstons could come back. Tell they can come that... back with their current attitude. How would that work? How would that look? Because there's talk of it. So how would that look? Well, at the moment, it would it would look exactly the same, which is concerning because there uh, they don't appear to be any sort of internal questioning of the fact that they might have made a few mistakes. But we're, like everyone makes mistakes, so I I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with them saying we've made some mistakes. But I guess it's just really hard for them to do that. Yeah, they need to they need to acknowledge first, hey, and that and that's such a big theme: the acknowledgement. People just want an acknowledgement of things that have happened, and it's mm. not the done thing, hey. Interesting, interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Yeah, we'll talk again. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, thank you so much. If you have made it this far through the interview, I really appreciate you sticking around. Isn't it fascinating how they are able to replicate just almost identically the same behaviours all over the world? been talking to someone in the Midwest of the USA today who's, you know, reporting the same scenarios and yeah, the mail I get, it's, it's just incredible. It's almost like there was a textbook, hey. So that's us for now. If you wanted to know more information about the case I talked about at the beginning, the Natalie Moses case, please go back and have a look for episodes called A World of Trouble, parts one and two. That'll fill you in a lot more. Looks like we're going to need a whole series just on Hillsong court cases. At this rate, there's still two or three more in the pipeline that we haven't even discussed. Really hope you're all looking after yourselves and thank you so much as always for your support, your messages and all kinds of likes and shares and follows and things that comments that really do mean a lot to me. I do see them all. It might take me a little while to get back to you, but it's all going around in my brain and yeah, thank you so much. If you can, please consider supporting this work through Patreon or PayPal, both in the Leaving Hillsong name. A little bit stretched at the moment, so yeah, we've had a bit of a rearrangement. If you can uh, help out, please let us know. And above all, please keep looking after yourselves and being kind to yourselves. There's a lot of movement out there, people leaving churches, swapping churches, like, yeah. The toll is tough. Be kind to yourself as you're going through this process again and again. And, you know, has so many different effects on different people. And that's, that's very deliberate. So, you know, be kind to the next person and uh, do your best when you keep on leaving Hillsong because you've got to keep on leaving Hillsong. And we'll talk really soon. Bye. Don't hang up. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we just.